Anthony Sassine joins us from Crane Shares, senior investment strategist. Anthony, thanks for being here this afternoon. Tell us about these numbers that we got. It seems like BYD is kind of crushing it over there. Yeah, good numbers, uh, but we're seeing kind of the balance shift a little bit again. You know, Xpong was doing better earlier. Now we're seeing Neo come back. Um, BYD is crushing it because they came up with a new car which can do up to 1,300 miles. It's a hybrid uh, between uh, you know, plug. It's a plug-in hybrid, so you can use on a full gas tank and a full battery. You can go up to 1,300 miles, which is which is a pretty uh, great breakthrough. And that's why we're seeing the stock up. Uh, good numbers overall. Um, the impressive numbers came from Zeker selling 18,000 cars in May. Um, you know, this is a, a new company, kind of a new brand by Geely, just started last year. It's very impressive for them to be able to, with one car, one model, to be able to sell uh, 18,000. That's in China. In the US, Kia is actually making some good headways, uh, you know, selling 7,000 EVs in the US for the first time. Kia has been investing in EVs. Uh, for a while, they're one of the uh, uh, traditional uh, auto companies that actually really dove into EVs deep, um, you know, with multiple models, and we're seeing that strategy actually, uh, you know, give them some some gains here. Neo uh, with some pretty big numbers, uh, but all of them, I mean, really impressive here. How much is that gap widening between uh, China growth versus Tesla? And then the kind of follow-up point then, Anthony, is how much of it is just sort of the timeline? They're a little bit later to the game, so they've got more kind of room to grow at this point versus Tesla maybe having saturated its main market here somewhat? Well, you know, like uh, Chinese uh, consumer have been really uh, gravitating towards uh, locally made uh, cars, and some of these new models have been really impressive, right? Uh, Tesla has been selling the same two models for, for many years. I mean, the brand is still there. They're still uh, doing well. They're still going to be leaders, especially in terms of technology for EVs. But, you know, Zika is impressive. The new X9 from Xpong is impressive. Uh, you know, and many of these companies uh, also launching uh, lower priced cars now. So to compete with Tesla, uh, Neo is launching the Alps model uh, in Q4. Also, Xpong is, working, Xpong is working on one. So, so you know, the, the competition is kind of heating up in the 200 to 300,000 uh, room and B range, which is the mass segment range. But for now, you have an ultimate leader in BYD. Okay. So for Tesla, does that mean further price cuts, you think, coming in China? What's going to be the result of this? Potentially. I mean, they still have some room to cut, given, you know, their margins. But, you know, Tesla, I think, in my opinion, made a, made a mistake uh, over the past two years focusing on a Cybertruck rather than, than just doing a cheaper car, which they promised to do two years ago in the $25,000 range, uh, you know, and that's a little bit delayed now. So Tesla have very, really kind of limited options in terms of competing with the car companies in China who are able to, uh, who are way ahead in generating a cheaper EV, which what the market needs today. So, uh, you know, you could see further uh, price cuts, uh, you know, any, but any breakthrough in FSD or in any other uh, technology could be interesting for Tesla. Uh, so they're not out yet, but, but they're gonna be a little bit, you know, held back because of not having the cheaper car done yet. Mm. Uh, Anthony, looking at your guys' strategies, what's the best way then to capture China plus EVs, is it still cars with the K? Uh, I, know, I know that Tesla's moved down the ranking there, right? It's like fourth or fifth holding last I checked. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. You know, this is the importance of having a basket, right? So with cars, we built it with Bloomberg New Energy Finance and Bloomberg Indices, basically to kind of cover the whole ecosystem, right? Not just the uh, vehicles, but also the, the, the components, uh, the battery makers, the raw materials, uh, plug-in, uh, uh, you know, uh, hybrids and hydrogen uh, and chargers. So, so this is a great way of accessing the universe because you're going to have a rotation in terms of what industry or what company is doing better in a certain time. You know, this year is a great example. Lee Auto, which is uh, which was high flying last year, is not doing so well today. But we're seeing some t signs of recovery in Neo uh, and Xpong and BYD. It continues to do well. So, uh, and Tesla, not so well. Having this basket approach, I think, is very important. What have you guys seen in flows generally as China has done well this year, Anthony? What's the most popular fund? What have folks been gravitating towards as the general regional play? Yeah, no, KWeb, definitely. It's, K -Web. it's the number one China fund. Yes, it has been 
uh, you know, seeing a lot of interest this year, and we've seen also the the top performer, at least uh, on the of the main China funds coming from KWeb, uh, outperforming the traditional, uh, you know, China uh, indices because these are the companies that have been, you know, hit the most over the past two years with regulations, and these are the most important companies in China in terms of retail, in terms in terms of online consumption. They are the mechanism of transmission of you know consumption uh, locally, and these companies have been, you know, uh, are really cheap and and uh, recovering today. So as you see the consumer recover, as you see China recovers, these companies like Tencent, Meituan, Alibaba, JD, they're going to be at the forefront of this rally. And we're seeing that happen uh, so far this year. The Politburo meeting in July is going to be interesting because the government has been implementing some interesting reforms with regards to real estate and consumption and unemployment, which is demand-driven reforms or policies, which we, we, what we've been looking for. So, so uh, once we start seeing results, I think we're going to see, see a big shift into China. All right. Glad we got you today. Appreciate you joining, Anthony. Thank you so much. Great rundown through the numbers. Anthony Sassine, Senior Investment Strategist, Crane Shares.